Hello and welcome to the session. So today we'll be talking about using Rocky for standard or traditional bulk material handling applications, in particular transfer chutes and conveying systems. So we'll talk about the fundamentals today from the capabilities standpoint. So we'll start off with a, an overview of DEM and Rocky. We'll talk about some of its capabilities and move on into a workshop demo where we'll take a look at a transfer shoot style applications. We'll cap it off by talking about some of the additional capabilities and finish up with some questions. Now, we have to start off with the obligatory stuff for those that are fresh-faced or maybe want to have a bit of a refresher. So Ansys Rocky is the flagship discrete element method solver. Now, the unique feature of this approach is that it explicitly considers the individual particles in a granular material as well as their interactions. And it is the interactions at this level between particles and particles and particles and boundaries that govern the overall behavior of the bulk solid. And so the system is modeled as essentially a conglomerate of non-contiguous elements with space or voidage in between them. Each element in the bulk can move relative to one another, they can collide with or even break each other. And we use simple numerical models to govern these interactions or these contacts, which can account for varying particle shapes, sizes and materials. This allows for many complex phenomena of granular or bulk material systems to be captured or predicted. Importantly, the extensive capabilities of the solver supports for a wide range of systems and applications across multiple industries to be studied. And to familiarize ourselves a little bit more with Rocky, let's talk about some of the key characteristics, and there are in fact seven of them, and they range from particle level models to multi-physics capabilities. And so we'll start off by talking about uh, multiple particle shapes or the capability to model a particle's uh, non-sphericity essentially and so rocky has uh, essentially three classes of of particle shape models that any user can employ and so these include um, particle shape models for full solid materials uh, and these could be of any non-spherical shape um, it also includes shell modeling as well as fiber modeling, so for fibrous particles. Uh, and each of these can be multi-element um, or flexible particles, flexible fibers, for example, uh, or singular element uh, objects. Now, the ANSYS integration, well, given ANSYS Rocky is one of the many products within the uh, portfolio, you can imagine there is a seamless integration between other ANSYS products. And so this includes or essentially uh, adds a multi-physics capability uh, to, to Rocky. And so this includes a, a DEM FEA uh, coupling with ANSYS Mechanical for a structural analysis, a DEM CFD coupling with ANSYS Fluent for the understanding and modeling of particle laden flows, um, a coupling with ANSYS Motion for understanding um, systems with uh, assemblies of, of multiple bodies uh, or structures and how they interact with, with one another. Uh, the embedded SPH DEM solver in, in Rocky, which we can use to solve for free surface type uh, particle laden flows, which we see here, uh, an example of a, uh, of a mill or a slurry in a mill. Uh, one of the other useful ones as well is the, the API, which supports customization. And so you can implement your own models. This could be something like a thermal model or a different adhesion model. Uh, but importantly, um, automation is a key concept here. And so we can automate both the setup of analysis uh, and more importantly, the post-processing of, of data. But why simulate? What exactly can we get out of simulations using ANSYS Rocky? And why would it be useful in the first place? So one of the critical uh, concepts to, to understand is that through simulation, 
through computational modeling, we can essentially obtain different types of information at different length scales. So if we consider the angle of repos uh, in this example, if we did this in real life, we could physically measure the angle of the stable pile, uh, the amount of mass in, in our little container, uh, but really just macroscopic features uh, we would be able to, um, to, to contain. And so with DEM, uh, we can gain a deeper insight into what's happening at the particle scale or underneath the free surface. And so we can look at the forces at play locally, uh, measure the distribution of individual particle sizes or materials if you have an inhomogeneous sample. And we can very easily extract essentially certain pieces of information which could either be prohibitively difficult to acquire uh, or even impossible via experimental means. And just um, on the topic of experimentation, you can imagine it can become extremely costly from both a time and financial standpoint to iteratively run through a set of physical tests. Instead, we can fire off any number of these tests within the computational domain, and we can do this at many different stages of the engineering process. And so we can use the information from our models to drive concept designs, and we could verify an existing design, maybe there have been some changes to the operating conditions, and we want to make sure that the equipment can safely handle this, or as a verification tool for a final design. Uh, and we'll see exactly how this can be done by taking a look at different types of examples uh, later on. Uh, and part of this will firstly be done by identifying some of the challenges we face in industry with regards to the design and operation of bulk material handling systems. I'm sure you'll already be familiar with many of these, uh, from the obvious satisfaction of material throughput requirements, which includes the prevention of flow blockages or dead zones, the minimization of ex of equipment wear and structural loads for the purposes of maximizing equipment life. We want things to be as reliable and last as long as possible, which is to also say we want to minimize impacts and loads, manage those stresses accordingly for longevity of design. I mean, all the way to environmental considerations, material sustainability, air and water pollution, dust gener generation minimization, energy efficiency uh, and process efficiency, we can use our computational models to gain a better understanding of the characteristics of the system and how the bulk material will behave to start addressing these problems 